Here I have the Sandix Extreme and Extreme Pro. The most noticeable physical difference is the size. The Extreme Pro is a little bit bigger compared to the Extreme. Now, which one of these will be the best fit for your M1 iMac, M1 MacBook Pro or M1 MacBook Air? I bought these two SSDs so you don't have to. If you watched my previous video of the Extreme Pro, you already know that this SSD is too fast for your M1 iMac. This is more expensive compared to the Extreme. But is it really worth to spend more money on the Extreme Pro to use it with your Mac? Or should you save money and buy the Extreme instead? Let's do the test so you can make a better decision based on the performance of both. To be fair on this test, both drives are formatted as XFAT. Our go-to software for this type of test is Blackmagic Disk. Here is the Extreme Pro. As you can see in these results, we are not getting the advertised speed of 2000 megabytes. Now let's test the Extreme. The results are almost identical, although on paper the Pro is 50% faster than the Extreme. There is one thing that you can do to make this drive a bit faster, which I will explain later in this video. The reason you're not getting the advertised speed is because both SSDs are USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 of 10 GB. And the compatible port of your iMac is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 of 10 GB. The 2021 and 2022 iMacs, MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs have USB 4 of 40 GB and Thunderbolt 3 of 40 GB. That doesn't mean that you can connect it here and you will get the advertised speed. No, it doesn't work that way. The speed is limited by the 10 GB port of your SSD. If you want to achieve the advertised speed, you need a computer that has hardware compatible with this SSD. Unfortunately, the current 2022 iMac, MacBook Pro and MacBook Airs models don't support it at this time, even the M12 chip models. In other words, these two SSDs are too fast for Macs. But wait, not all is lost. If you really need extreme speeds, you can buy or build your own NVMe SSD. But you need to make sure the drive is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 of 20 GB. The 20 GB port will unlock the full speed to use it with the Thunderbolt ports of your iMac or laptop. Now, let's talk about how you can make this SSD faster. And that is to format as APFS. This is the default file system for Mac computers using Mac OS 10.13 or later. You need to understand these warnings before formatting as APSF. I only recommend it if you use this SSD only with Mac computers running 10.13 or later. If you want to switch from Mac to Windows, this won't work for you. As you can see, the Extreme became faster compared to the first test formatted as XFAT. You now have the test results of these two drives. You saw the performance and know the good and the bad. Which one are you going to buy? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.